on GH101. We're in the, doing some classic beginning programming stuff. In particular, we're looking at sorting algorithms, and we're going to do the code for bubble sort. Um, we took some notes on bubble sort, and now I'm going to actually do it. So for now, I'm just going to work down here, leave those comments up above so I can give this file to you and you can have those notes. But what I want to do is make a bubble sort algorithm. And in R, that means we're going to be making a function. Um, the function is going to have a parameter. And then in between curly braces is going to be our code for doing the sorting. So bubble sort. And I'm going to do the the code for this in a way that will look similar to if you're doing this algorithm in other languages as well. Um, so first of all, I'm just going to source this file. Though I don't have any errors in it at the moment. I could call this bubble sort function. And nothing, nothing happens because I don't have any code in there yet. Um, what I'm going to do is go over to um, one of the files where we did something with random numbers. And that is in homework. No, R. Okay. So the bot test program did something with uh, random numbers. So we had sant, sample dot int, and that was the function that we were using for random numbers. Let's see about that. So sample dot int n is how large. Um, so let's just try this out. So what if we do uh, 10, 10? So that gives us looks like 10 numbers. What if we do 10, 100, 110? So the first number is saying that the numbers are up to 100, and the second one is how many are there going to be. Um, so I'm going to say that I want like this right now, and then I want to save that into a variable. So numbers sample dot int one hundred and ten. All right, then I have a vector of numbers, a list of numbers. All right, so I'm gonna that worked just the way I wanted it to. I'm gonna save that up here. And just to be clear that this is a different variable here than this one, I'll call it nums. All right, and I'll source my file, and then I could call bubble sort nums. It doesn't do anything at the moment. Um, we don't know, uh, I don't think we've done a video on how to deal with this um, this nums thing, but so I'll just tell you how do we get in there. So I know that nums is this, and if I double click on it here, Now, if I let's view it, all right. So that gives me a graphical view of things. That the first number is 41, and you can see that over here as well. Um, so if you do square brackets and you have a vector, so one is the first item, two is the second item, and so on. All right. So that's something that I'm going to need to be able to do, and I'm also going to need. To to be able to know how many numbers are there. And there's something called length that says how many are there. All right, so I think I have enough that I could start doing this. All right, so I want to compare the first two numbers. Let's just do the first two numbers. So if 
numbers bracket one is wrong. So if numbers bracket one is greater than numbers bracket two, then I want to switch them. Okay, so you might decide that you're going to put code like this. Numbers bracket one equals numbers bracket two. Numbers bracket two equals numbers bracket one. There's, that's going to be a problem. But I'm going to leave it like that for now. So this is just comparing the first two. If they're in the wrong order, then I put the second one into the first one and put the first one into the second one. Um, these actually are in the wrong order, so I'm going to um, I'm not going to change the numbers, but I am going to run uh, bubble sort with that with those numbers, and I'll print it. Okay, so since I put a comment there, I'm not going to create an numbers again. I'm just going to use the one that's already there and then I'm going to source this. Okay, then it printed. It should have just switched the first two numbers. 42 and 2 should have switched and all the rest should be the same. All the rest of the numbers are the same is what they started, but I have 2 and 2 instead of 2 and 41. And the reason is because let's let's um, I'll put a note down here. Note on code for swapping, uh, swapping things. Let's say that we started with this and we had 41 here. So if if we do this, what what happens? So I'm going to keep track of down here what we have. So we start with this, and then the first line says whatever's in the second number, put it into the first. So whatever's in the second, I put it into the first. Um, so numbers bracket one equals numbers bracket two then we have this, I'll just put it like that. Um, that's what I have. Okay, now if I run the next statement, numbers bracket two gets numbers bracket one. I already have a two there, I already lost the, the 41. So the reason it still looks like this because I already overwrote the 41. Okay, so what this means is, um, therefore, uh, when swapping, you need to save the one before overwriting it. And so what we're going to do in the code up here is before I save something in the numbers bracket one, I'm going to say x equals numbers bracket 1. Okay, so then I'll still have that 41 value, and I can use that here. All right, I'm going to source this again. What do we have for the nums? We have 43, 47, and 3. So the nums is this one here. The, the first two are out of order. I pass that into bubble sort. I supposedly switched the first two numbers. And then I printed the result. And so that had them in the right order. OK, that doesn't change my nums variable because um, I didn't I didn't say nums 
this just returns to the way things work in R is the, the list that gets returned is kind of a new list. So I could say sorted nums equals this. And then nums is still the same. I could print nums. Um, and I could print sorted nums. Sorted nums. Um, this time it just happened to pick two random values that are in the right order there. They'll be out of order about half the time. So this is my nums and this is my sorted nums. All right, so now I want this to happen for the, the second and the third. And we could do this. Okay, now I'm going to do the second and the third. Unless I made a mistake, that would be fine for switching the second and the third. This isn't going to be a good thing to do, but we can see um, what it looks like. So here we got one where the first two were in the right order, but then the next two were not in the right order, so they got switched in the sorted result. All right, but I just copied and pasted. And anytime that we're copying and pasting, having basically the same code, it's probably not, uh, not the right way to do it. I mean, not the best way. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to make another function. Well, let's leave it like this for now. So um, I'll have a variable called pause1 and a variable called pause two so this shouldn't change anything about how it works at the moment I should be switching the first two if they need to be switched so that's still happening down here but the nice thing is if I then want to instead switch the let's say I want to switch the second and the third instead all I have to do is change this here I don't have to change this code so here I had the second and the third were out of order and they got switched now the real value in this is if I put this in its own function so I'm gonna call this swap Okay, so now I have a function given list of numbers, swap the ones in pause one and pause two. Okay, and then what I want to do is numbers equals swap one, two numbers. This is really an if swap, so we'll call it swap if swap ones in position one and position two if they are out of order okay so now I have my nums let's just look at the nums what happens if I do swap if one two nums So those two are out of order, positions one and two. I didn't actually change the nums, so if I wanted to change the nums, I have to do nums equals swap if one, two, nums. Now they're fixed. If I want to do the two and three, then I just go like that.
now the two and three have been fixed. All right, so if I know that there's 10, I could do this. Of course, I'm copying and pasting a lot of stuff, so this is, I'm gonna fix this in a minute. So one time going through the numbers to swap the ones out of order. would be like this. We go all the way up to position 9 and position 10. So that would do it once, one time through. Let's see what happened here. So we compared these two, they're fine. These two are fine. These two are fine. These are in the wrong order, they get switched. Then I'd be comparing 91 and 93, those are fine. Then I'd be comparing 93 and 97. They get switched. 90, or 79 goes there. Then I'd be comparing the 93 with the 63. Those would get switched. Really, the 93 goes all the way to the end. Right, you could check that if you go through and do bubble sort one time through this, this is correct. OK. Um, this is a perfect time to use a for loop. So what we really want to do is have some kind of for loop something like this. If you want to go back and look at the way it was, you can go back in the video a second. But so what I want to see here is, let me just not um, not do anything with the numbers. I just want to print the values of i. So these are my values of i. So I'm doing i in this. So this is 1 up to this number. So the length of numbers, we can look at that down here. And then the length of numbers minus 1 is 9. And that's the last time I want to switch position 9 and position 10. So instead of printing, I'm going to do the swap if each time. So first time i is 1, this is going to swap if positions 1 and 2 and I go all the way up to 9, and this is going to be positions 9 and 10. So that should be still the same. That should still be um, one time through. So this is one time uh, going through and swapping uh, adjacent numbers uh, if out of order. Okay, so to do the whole thing, I want to do, keep going through the list as long as there was a swap. So now I want to keep track of if there was a swap, yes or no. So um, we need to be able to tell if there actually was a swap, yes or no. And there's different ways we could do that, but with what we have already, so if uh, positions i and i plus 1 were swapped, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do this. So this is position i value before swap if. So if if the numbers i is not equal to pos i, this means not equal to.
Okay, so if I do the swap if and whatever's at position i is not what it was before, then we did a swap. And I want to I want to save a variable, make a variable here that says um, did swap. Initially, I'm saying that's false. Before I do anything, I haven't done a swap. Inside of here, if I do a swap, did swap equals true. So if I do this, it should still go through only once, but I want to do something with this did swap. So for that, I need to look up my loops in R so I'll go to my base R cheat sheet. Here's a for loop. Here's a while loop. So the while loop is close to what we want. We can make it work. Um, so I'm going to put the did swap up here. Let's see. I'm going to put the did swap up here. Initially, I'm going to say true, and then I'll say while did swap. If I highlight this and press tab, it spaces it all over one, which is what I want. Okay, so the way I read this now, um, initialize to true, so do the loop at least once. Okay. So first time I get into this uh, function, I set it to true. If it's true, then I go ahead and go through the go through the list. And now I say, all right, I'm about to start looking through things. I'll put a false there to start off with. Go through, check them all. Okay, so we have the bubble sort works. This is, uh, this is something that works if we put in even more, um, you know, we could put in a hundred of these and run it. And then if we looked at this thing, it's in sorted order. Let's make the numbers bigger maybe. So they'll be in sorted order. We did that. Um, probably you're okay with, you could do it on paper. You wouldn't want to with a hundred numbers. Um, And I think we'll leave this at that. Um, we did learn, we did a few new R things to be able to do this. Um, part of the part of the reason for going through this is we did the algorithm or the code development process, which I could put in our notes here um, under programming. Um, and this would be the incremental development, right? So we did the incremental development process. And if you wanted to, you could watch this video again to see how we just did a little bit, make it do a little bit, and then make it do a little bit more. And part of that is a bit of an art form about having the right idea of the first thing that's easy to do. All right, we will uh, come back to this in a homework assignment. For now, that's bubble sort.